Hey Math Kids, today we're going to look at functions that you can use for your art project. And let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> so if you want to do a horizontal line, you just say y equals a number. So this is a horizontal line at y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. You can just move it up and down. And then if you watch the first video in this series, you can see how to bind that. Um, I guess just a quick uh, recap, we can say like 1 is less than x is less than 5 and we get a horizontal line that goes from x equals 1 to x equals 5. Okay, Down here a vertical line goes like that. Once again this is the only situation where we will bind it by the y values. So if I wanted to go from 1 to 3 I say 1 is less than y is less than 3 and then I get a vertical line that goes from y equals 1 to y equals 3. Okay. And then if I want to move where that line's at, I just change the value of x. Okay, see x equals 9 right there. Okay, here's just a standard line. I'm sure you guys have done this a million times, so I'm not going to go into that one. But this is just in y equals mx plus b, or slope intercept or gradient intercept form. Okay, we have a parabola. Um, if you just need to move it up and down, you can do this. Remember the negative sign flips it upside down. Um, also, it's probably more useful though if you use this form um, where this negative 2 moved it to the right 2. So here, let's do this actually. So if we start with just x squared, negative sign flips it upside down. If I minus 2, it moved to the right 2. It's counterintuitive. And then if I want to move it up, I can do plus 4. So that moved it up 4. So this outside one affects the y, and it's intuitive. So plus goes up, minus goes down. This inside one is counterintuitive, and it affects the x. So negative goes to the right, positive goes to the left. Now we can do <coughs> similar things with um, a cubic function. So um, you know we can make it skinnier by putting a big number right here, wider by doing that. If we want to move it to the uh, to the right two, we'll do minus two. If we want to move it up four, we can say plus four. Okay, so it, it works relatively the same way. Um, this function that's x to the fourth works same thing. So if I do 1 over 2, it's going to get wider. 1 over 7, even wider than that. I can put it in a form that kind of looks like vertex form. I moved it up 4. Now I can move it to the right 2. Okay, Move it to the left 2 if I change it to a plus sign. Okay. Um, this is like, you know, technically a fifth degree function, but then I'm just making it like, polynomial or whatever. Technically all these are polynomials as well, but um, the more you add to it, so if I just do just x to the fifth, looks pretty close to x to the third, but then if I aggregate things, it starts distorting it in different weird ways, and I suggest just um, playing around, just guess and check and see what happens. Okay, x to the sixth looks kind of like a weird shaped parabola that's kind of flat right here and then once again if I start adding things it starts getting more and more distorted but it has that general parabolic shape like it's kind of like that. Now these next two are called rational functions and it's where we take a polynomial and divide it by another polynomial and you'll get you're almost always going to create a vertical and possibly horizontal asymptotes and so you get these kind of like two-piece, three-piece, four-piece functions sometimes, depending on what it looks like. So this one has two separate pieces, a piece that kind of looks like a parabola, but it's kind of slanted, and then this just like curvy line that almost looks like a cubic function that's been stretched out. Okay, we look at this. This one has three pieces. We can see we have an asymptote like right here. We have an asymptote right here. This looks like a, you know, an odd function kind of, this looks almost exponential, and this looks almost exponential. But you'll just get a lot of cool, um, weird shapes if you go down this route of rational functions. Okay, this next one is um, the square root, and I just want to show you how you get a square root. So you do s 
Q, R. And then when I hit the T, so square root, it'll turn into a square root symbol. So I'm just going to hit a T, and then I just put X. And you can do a lot of the same things. You can do a 3 out here, which is going to make it really steep. You can do a 1 third, which makes it wider. Um, if I do like a minus 1 on the inside, it moves to the right. If I do like a plus 4 on the outside, it moves up. So it follows those similar properties that we were looking at before. Now this is a um, cube root, so like a square root symbol with a 3 on the outside. I think it's easier if you use a rational exponent though. You technically can do something like, um, I think they have it in the calculator right here, let's see. Um, maybe they don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, maybe that's the only way to do it. There, there might be another way. But um, So for a cube root, I would do 1 over 3. Fourth root, 1 over 4. You can even do a square root, which is 1 over 2. Um, and just depending on what type of root you want, just keep changing that. So that's a ninth root. Um, and it follows all those same properties if you want to move it around. Here's just another special function. It's x, over, x raised to the x. You get some really weird stuff going on in this area right here. And so that's kind of cool. You can look, um, it kind of breaks up. Where did that go? Um, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know where that went. But um, so you can play around with that. This kind of looks like half a parabola ish, it's a little bit different. And now we're getting into log functions. And if you look at these two, they have roughly the same shape. So we have log of x and natural log of x. Um, natural log is log base e. We haven't really talked about what e is. Um, but you could do a log base 2, log base 3. And you just get kind of different like rates of change is really all that's changing. But you get this general shape where there's an asymptote at 0, and you just kind of um, this is the inverse to an exponential function. So, for example, if I do e to the x, which is the inverse, and then if I graph, I'll just change this one to y to the x. See how they're a reflection across that line. When we're learning about inverses, um, it's just kind of FYI. Now we're getting into trig functions, which are um, periodic. So it means they go on forever. So this is a sine function. And if we graph a cosine, what a cosine is, is if you take sine, so if you take this peak and you shift it to the left right here, then they're exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, you can do, <clears throat> you want to do parentheses if you're going to do any shifting. But if I want to move it to the, here, let's get rid of the red one for a second. So um, like if I want to shift it to the right too, I do that. If I want to shift it up four, I do that. If I want to make it wider, I do that. If I want to make it skinnier, I do that. And make it, um, uh, sorry, taller is what I meant to say. Um, yeah, so you can do all the same thing. Cosine looks like that. Tangent looks like that. Uh, these are all asymptotes. These are undefined at these values. And once again, you can do same thing. If I want to move it to the right, 2, do that. If I want to move it up, 3, uh, etc. Okay, secant looks like this. We can do all this kind of stuff, moving it left, right, up, down, make it wider, skinnier, whatever you want. Cosecant looks similar but shifted, right? And then cotangent, if we compare it to tangent, let's just do tangent. We can see difference between them. So that's cotangent and then that's tangent. Okay, I know that was a lot of information in a pretty short video, but um, if you need additional help, come to Math Lab. Until then, calculate it.